essential is the change of the magnetic flux. If we take some kind of a conducting wire, like so, let's make it in the blackboard for now to make it easy, and I attach to this wire a surface, because the moment that you talk about flux, you must always specify your surface. A flux can only go through a surface. So this is my surface now, for simplicity. And there is a magnetic field coming out of the blackboard at me, and it is growing. It is increasing. I will now get an EMF, a current, flowing in this direction. Lenz law. If the magnetic field is increasing, then the current will be in such a direction that it opposes the change. It doesn't want that magnetic field to increase, and so it goes around like this, the current, so that it produces a magnetic field that is in the blackboard. And so it is the flux change of that magnetic field through this flat surface that determines the EMF. So the EMF is then the flux change, d phi dt, through that surface. To express Lenz law that it is always opposing the change of the magnetic flux, we have a minus sign here. That minus sign will never bother you, believe me, because you always know in which direction the EMF is. It's clear that the EMF is going to be in this direction. That's the direction in which it will make the current flow. But we have to put it there to be mathematically correct. That's really Lenz law. You're looking at Lenz law here. So you can also write down for this minus the surface integral of B dot dA over that open, ooh, I hope you didn't see this, over this open surface. That's the same thing. Oops, <laughs> look what I did. I forgot the DDT in front of the integral sign. Sorry for that. If you put yourself inside that conductor and you march around in the direction of the current, you will see everywhere in the wire an electric field, of course, otherwise there would be no current flowing. And so if you go once around this whole circuit, then that EMF must, of course, also be E dot dL over the closed loop. So you're marching inside the wire, you find everywhere an electric field, and these little sections are dl. E and dl are always in the same direction if you stay in the wire, and so this should be the same, and this is a closed loop. So this is all, if you want, what we call Faraday's law. We never see it in so much detail. I will abbreviate it a little bit on the board there, but I want you to, to appreciate that there is no battery in this circuit. There is only a change in the magnetic flux through a surface that I have attached to the conducting wire. And then I get an induced EMF, and the induced EMF will produce a current given by Ohm's law. So I want to write down now on that blackboard there, Faraday's law in a somewhat abbreviated way because we have all Maxwell's equations here. And so we now have that the closed loop integral, closed loop of E dot dL, that's that induced EMF. You can take minus d phi dt or the time derivative of the integral B dot dA 
That's the one I will take. Integral of b dot dA, and this is over an open surface. And that open surface has to be attached to this loop. And that is Faraday. We have Gauss law. We have Ampere's law. We have this one, which tells you that magnetic monopoles don't exist. This would only not be zero if you had a magnetic monopole and put it in a closed surface. Come and see me if you find one. And this now is Faraday's law. So you think that all four Maxwell's equations are now complete. Not quite. We're going to change this one shortly. So we can't celebrate yet. We have to wait the big party. There's always a little bit of an issue about the direction of dA. And I will explain to you how the convention goes, but it really is not so crucial because Lenz law always helps you to find the direction of the EMF. But if we are trying to be a purist, if this is my conducting loop, and if I attach a flat surface to this, if I did that, and if I go around the closed loop integral E dot dL, Faraday doesn't tell me which way I have to go. I can go clockwise, I can go counterclockwise. We will then do the same thing that we did before with Ampere's law, apply the right hand corkscrew rule, and that is that if you march around clockwise, then the A will be in the blackboard, perpendicular to the blackboard, perpendicular to this surface, and if you go counterclockwise, then the A will come towards you. The surface doesn't have to be flat. It can be flat, nothing wrong with it, but there can also be a bag attached to it. As we also had earlier, I have here a close conducting wire, and I could put the surface right here, but I can also make it ahead, like this, perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. That's a open surface attached to this loop. That's fine. You have a choice. And the convention with dA is then exactly the same, that if you go clockwise, then the dA would be in this direction, using the right-hand corkscrew locally here. If you went counterclockwise, the dA would flip over. So what is now the recipe that you have to follow? You have a circuit, electric circuit, that determines then your loops, of course. You can take loops anywhere.